Hello and welcome to the QA Underground. Today we're going to be talking about AI-enabled testing strategies. And those strategies really involve how we're going to integrate that AI into our testing process, right? So we really do that by taking the tests and breaking them down into two buckets, right? We have the AI candidates and the non-AI candidates. And those non-AI candidates are really the actions performed by the human tester. And what those actions are, are really like the mission critical scripts, right? We have the uh, these required test scripts that we need to write to be able to validate the feature that's actually in our current sprint. And these are extremely important and these are never really going to be handled by the AI. It's going to be handled by the human tester because these are the features that we have to have tested. Uh, on the AI candidate side, we really want to use that and utilize that power and strength of the AI technologies to be able to cover that peripheral testing that's in the background, right? So we have that core testing in the middle that we're writing our mission critical tests for, and then we have that peripheral testing that we may not have time within the, the constraints of the sprint to be able to get to, right? And that's where we can really offload that, that heavy workload to the AI technology and allow that to, to boost our code coverage. Uh, some great examples of human testing would be um, outside of the mission critical tasks is those user stories and test cases, right? Uh, and then obviously the AI side has that code coverage portion. Now, I want to go into a couple examples of what non-AI candidates are and what some AI candidates are. Uh, non-AI candidates, uh, again, that are being performed by the human tester are really that apathetic testing, right? That persona testing, the UAT testing, uh, and really like ad hoc testing, right? That's a great example of human where a human tester would still be needed. And ad hoc testing is really important because it really requires creativity and uh, a good amount of domain knowledge by the tester. Uh, AI candidates really are obviously the significant increase in code coverage, right? Those are, that's where you're really looking to bump your code coverage and you really want to cover your tester's backs during the sprint. Uh, and then the other areas that you look at for AI candidate, uh, candidacy is really uh, where is my highest maintenance areas, right? We have like defined web elements. I think we've all been there where it's taken way too long to find, uh, to write a test because we're trying to define all the web elements. Um, it also is important to note and emphasize that the test creation and the authoring time is lowered significantly, right? With when we utilize the AI technologies on the back end, it really shortens that, that process up. And by shortening that process up, what it really does is really open the testers minds and abilities in their free time, right? They, the tester now has all this extra time and what do they do with it, right? Uh, in the old model, we would get a feature to test during the sprint and all the testers would gang up on it and try to test as much as they possibly could, right? Uh, and it, and it, obviously there's some significance to that, but there's also the scenario where our code coverage is now no longer uh, consistent. It's, it's all over the board, right? Uh, we might be extremely low on code coverage, even though our feature is tested and it's working for the most part, there's still these scenarios that are in the peripheral testing that are going to fail or probably come back to get you for a hot fix, right? And the other scenario, which is a lot more efficient, is the AI technologies, are utilizing the AI technologies within the testing model, right? So on the, on the AI candidacy part, where we utilize the AI technologies, we really allow our testers freedom. We allow them the amount of time that they need to be able to really specialize and focus in on the strengths that they have, right? So, and this is a really important uh, point to emphasize. We really want to allow the testers the freedom and the time to be able to really focus in on their strengths and their uh, specializations, right? So one tester might be really good at writing test cases or another tester might be really good at documentation or the other tester might be really good at mission critical API test scripts. They're really allowed the time to focus in on that, right? And really improve that mission critical core that's required during the sprint. And then really handing off the, um, the heavy workload of improving that code coverage to the AI technologies on the back end. And that's an incredible feat and it's very empowering to the tester, right? The tester feels so, it's very like relieving. It's a lot of weight off the shoulders testers and be able to be more comfortable with what they're doing. Uh, it, it's really a, a QA mind shift, right? And that's the most important thing. Uh, so I really want to thank everybody for joining in on this um, quick video on the core of setting up an AI enabled testing strategy. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. We really, we really appreciate your support. Uh, and in the coming weeks, we're going to have some additional AI videos coming to the channel uh, that I really hope that you would love to check out. All right. Thanks. Bye.